Hey guys, what's going on? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And today, guys, we're going to talk defense and special teams units. Now, again, I, I made a previous video before this one about kickers. This is not a position that I particularly spend a whole lot of time on. There's too much fluctuation between the best and the worst de defenses. It's very, very difficult to know who is going to do well on a year to year basis. In fact, I more so actually look at defenses on a week-to-week -week basis. I go out and I pick up a defense that's going up against a bad offense, an offense that has a quarterback that's new into the system, uh, an offense that has had trouble stopping the opposing pass rush, things like that. Those, are, those tend to be the things that I look for personally when I'm swapping in and out my defenses. But for those of you that are looking for a defense that you can hold on to throughout the majority of the year and really not have to think about it, I'm going to give you guys my top 10 defenses. I'll explain just a little bit about each one and then we'll move on and move on with our lives after defenses because again, guys, just like kickers, I don't recommend taking defenses before the final three rounds of your draft, final two rounds if at all possible. I, I really don't recommend de reaching on any defense prior to that, even the number one defense don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Trust me. All right, let's get into the top 10, guys. At number 10, we're going to go with the Detroit Lions. Now, this is a defense that finished fifth in 2014 in defensive scoring. They got after the quarterback a decent amount. They were eighth in the league in sacks, but they did lose their number one defensive player, in my personal opinion, which is Ndamukong Su. That's a big loss for this unit. They do have other players that can step in and perform fairly well, at least, but losing Su is, I mean, that's like losing... Pretty much, it's the defense's equivalent of losing a Peyton Manning, basically. I mean, this guy is an absolute animal. He's a leader on the defense. He's a thug. I understand that on the field. He, he does some nasty stuff. But there's no doubting that Ndamukong Su is an absolute beast. So that's why we have to move the Lions down from being a top five defense to just a borderline top 10 defense. Um, they're going to be a defense that you can probably find on the waiver wire in a lot of weeks. And you might want to use them in weeks where they're playing against bad offenses like Chicago or, or things like that. Where you know teams tend to turn the ball over and allow their quarterback to get sacked and stuff like that. So uh, try and pay attention to that this year on the waiver wire, guys. At number nine, we've got the New England Patriots. They finished sixth last year in defensive scoring. They were 13th in sacks. Not the best defense in the world, but the thing is, is that New England has been so consistent for the majority of the past, I don't know, 10 years or so. This team has had a quality top 10, borderline top 10 defense. There really haven't been many, many times where they've been toward the bottom of the league. And that's kind of hard to find at defense because most of the time you're going to see a lot of fluctuation, at least in fantasy scoring, from year to year between defenses. And, and again, New England has really been able to curb that. They've been able to stay ahead of the trends, uh, find the things that work for their specific team, and really just do a great job putting up decent fantasy points. They've really never been like a top two, top three defense, but look, they've been consistently in the top 10, and I don't see any reason to, to ex expect that that is gonna change anytime soon. So that's why we're putting them in here at number nine. At number eight, we've got another defense that's been very consistent, just like New England, and but it's a little bit more surprising, and that is the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Arizona is a team that you really wouldn't expect to have great defense over the past you know, five, 10 years, but they actually have been very, very consistent. They've produced a solid fantasy defense most of the past five to 10 years, and that's made them, you know, it's, it's allowed them to fly under the radar because they, again, just like the Patriots, they haven't performed at the highest of the high end, but they've been very, very good for the most part. So uh, Arizona is a defense that I think you can be safe with most weeks. They do play in a division with some offenses that aren't particularly good as well. So I think that that helps them out just a little bit. It gives them six games against offenses that are, you know, league average or so at best. Seattle, I understand, might be better this year, but statistically, Seattle's offense is not that amazing. They don't put up a ton of points. So um, again, Arizona defense, solid enough to make the top 10 of this list. Another defense in the same division, St. Louis, is actually one that I'm, I'm kind of interested in this year. They finished eighth this past season. They were 13th in sacks. Now, I'm not going to say that St. Louis is some amazing defense or anything like that, but they do have players that can get after the quarterback. And that's really what's important on, on from a, a defense and special team standpoint, as far as I'm concerned. You want to make sure that your defensive line can get in there, cause some ruckus, get after the quarterback, force him to throw some interceptions, and do that kind of stuff to just avoid the, the bad, bad game 
games that can happen from time to time if you are getting that pass rush and the opposing team is allowed to just sit back there in the pocket and throw all over you. St. Louis doesn't allow that, and that's why they've been a pretty decent defense for the past couple of years. And despite the fact that their offense has been absolutely atrocious and put them in a horrible situations time and time again, St. Louis was very, very good this past year. And that's why I think they're going to be good again. Their offense should actually be a little bit better this year, which actually should mean better fantasy scoring for their defense hopefully hopefully they have better situations they're not the opposing team isn't getting the ball at the 50 yard line and things like that and allowing them to you know only have to drive 15 yards to get into field goal position so that's why we're going with st louis at number seven now number six we're going with philadelphia who actually finished second among defensive scorers this past season it's kind of interesting that they were that high most people think of philadelphia you think of the offense philadelphia was actually a very good fantasy defense real life defense Eh, not so much, but from a fantasy standpoint, they did an amazing job this past year. They were second in the league in total sacks, which again was probably pretty surprising to most people, but it's true. They were they were great at getting after the opposing quarterback. But the thing is with Philadelphia, and the reason that I don't have them ranked in the top three, top five, is because their defense was kind of uh, it was kind of thrown off by, by a lot of defensive touchdowns. Like they had a very high number of defensive touchdowns this past year, and that just isn't likely to continue. We've seen that in the past with Chicago, for example, back when they had Devin Hester. Yes, they had a few years in there where they were getting a ton of return touchdowns. I mean, it was at a record pace. Philadelphia doesn't really have anybody that's doing that, right? And because they don't have a Devin Hester type returning kicks, I'm not expecting that to really continue. Uh, I don't think defensive touchdowns are something that you can expect on a week to week or even a year to year basis. It's just it's too it's too volatile. There's too much fluctuation between year to year on, on defensive touchdowns. So I don't even really look at that as being something that you can project down the road. So that's why I think Philadelphia, the reason that they're in the top six versus being a little bit lower on the list, given the fact that they had so many touchdowns last year, um, they, if you wipe those out, they would have been lower on the list, obviously. But um, the reason that I have them ranked where I do is because I still expect them to get after the quarterback plenty, and that should make them a solid fantasy defense most weeks. They do go in a division where uh, they are going to have an opportunity to play the Redskins, for example. They're going to have an opportunity to play against Eli Manning, who throws a lot of interceptions. Those types of things can really turn out to fantasy, you know, exp they can really make your fantasy numbers look a lot better than they otherwise would, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's move on to number five. We've got the Denver Broncos. This is a defense that, again, plays in a division against some bad, bad offenses. San Diego, probably the exception here, but Kansas City and, of course, Oakland. Those teams can have some horrible games on offense, so you like to see that. Those are That's at least four games against offenses that are below the league average, and Denver really is going to do a great job getting after the quarterback, in my opinion. They did finish in the top 10 in sacks last year. They were a top 10 defense last year. I expect them to get even better this year. This team is really, really focused on getting after the quarterback, it sounds like, and I'm expecting them to be, again, in the top 10 among sacks, and that should make them, again, in the top 10 among defenses. Denver, is they're going to be running the ball a little bit more this year, so I expect them to be in fewer shootouts, which should allow the opposing offenses less opportunity to get down the field and score points, which should help you out on your fantasy defense from, uh, from a point standpoint. But also, again, they're going to have the opportunity to get after the quarterback, let's hope, uh, even more than they have in the past. I'm expecting more blitzing from them. Von Miller could be a guy that gets 15 or more sacks again this season. And uh, yeah, so Denver is definitely going to be a solid fantasy defense this year, in my opinion. Number four, I've got the Houston Texans. I mean, this is pretty much, instead of just saying the Houston Texans, you can pretty much say like the J.J. Watts. And J.J. Watt is that good that he's a top five defense practically by himself. This guy puts up crazy, like amazing Hall of Fame numbers. It's, it's ridiculous. This guy has a real opportunity this year to break the NFL sack record. And I don't say that lightly. This guy is an unbelievable player for the Houston Texans. He does everything that you would look for and more. And it, it leaves other opportunities for other guys as well. When he's getting after the quarterback, even if he doesn't get a sack, he's forcing guys to throw the ball poorly, which can get intercepted. He's forcing the teams to not be able to run to his side, which is, of course, making it more difficult for them. All these different types of things make this defense better than it otherwise would be. If J.J. Watt get, does get injured, I almost think you drop the Houston defense. But when he's on the field, they're a top five fantasy defense. That's really all there is to it. They finished fourth last year. I have them fourth this year as well. And I expect them to even be a little bit better this year than they were last year. Hopefully a little bit more consistent. Hopefully we don't have to rely on those defensive touchdowns. 
At number three, I have the Miami Dolphins, and this one's a little bit interesting because Miami did not finish in the top 10 or even the top 12 at, the, at defense last year, which makes them not a fantasy starter in, in your standard 12-team leagues. They finished 14th which isn't horrible, but it's not great. It's league average, roughly. But they were 16th in sacks as well, which is pretty much dead in the middle league average. That's not great. But they added the guy that Detroit lost in Damakong Su. Again, we talked about this before, and Damakong Su is a game changer. This guy is an absolute animal on the defensive line. And I expect this team to make a huge step forward defensively. And I don't see any reason to believe that this that this defensive line is not going to be one of the best in football. And Dominic Su is going to leave so many opportunities for Cameron Wake to come around the end and get sacks. It's going to be crazy. And Dominic Su by himself can get sacks as well. So I'm definitely expecting a big step forward for the Miami defense. They play in a division that, again, doesn't really have that great of offenses. The Jets are horrible on offense. The Bills might even be worse. And the Patriots it's, you don't know what's going to happen with them. They've got Jimmy Garoppolo for the beginning of the year, but how long is it going to take before Tom Brady is, get, gets reacclimated with that offense? Is there going to be any sort of problems that stem from the fact that he hasn't played for four weeks at that point? You don't know. So I love the fact that the Miami Dolphins also have a, an amazing schedule to start the season. They play some bad, bad offenses to start the year before they eventually meet New England in New England. Um, but again, this is the type of defense that I look for when I'm starting my fantasy uh, season. I, when I look at it, I look for teams that are playing horrible offenses. Miami plays Jacksonville in week one, and it doesn't get much more difficult than that uh, from that point until about week five. So I think Miami's got the best first quarter of the season schedule, and that's why I'm targeting them in my fantasy leagues. You can draft them in your final round or your second to final round in most leagues because people just don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. To me, you look at what the defense has done uh, or what they've done in the past a little bit, but you also look at their schedule. I think that's even more important. We want to look at their schedule. We want to find out what they're going to be doing here in the first couple of weeks of the season, and then we project from there. You know, Did they do well in those games? Are they good enough? Are they doing a good enough job that even against good offenses that we're going to keep them or not? And if they're not doing an amazing job, then we get rid of them and we find somebody else who's playing a bad offense. It's as simple as that. That's how you really rotate your defenses, and that's how you stay ahead of the curve, and that's actually how you can outperform even the best defenses on a week-to-week -week basis. So let's go on to number two, which is the Buffalo Bills. This team finished first in the league in your standard scoring defensive category this past season. They were also first in sacks. I mention this because, again, sacks to me are the only real thing that you can say from a year-to-year -year basis are going to be consistent. Interceptions just a lot of times have to do with the opposing quarterback just making a mistake or you know, um, a, a defender making an amazing play once out of every 10 times that the ball is thrown his way. And that's just not consistent enough, and especially not kick returns, especially not defensive touchdowns. We don't like to project those types of things because they're so very, very inconsistent. But sacks are something that we can really project on a year-to-year -year basis, and Buffalo has done an amazing job over the past few years. They're also adding Rex Ryan, who's obviously a defensive mastermind to their mix, and man, that's going to be a good defense. I don't see any reason to believe that Buffalo will not again be a top five fantasy defense. They've got an opportunity again to be the number one fantasy defense this year if they can just stay consistent and not get caught up in any of the chaos at the quarterback position that is almost impossible to avoid at this point for their franchise. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely like Buffalo. They're my number two defense this year, only behind my number one defense, which is the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I've got Seattle at number one because of their consistency. This isn't a defense that has been elite ever since Pete Carroll came into town years ago. I mean, they've really put up amazing fantasy numbers from a defensive standpoint. We, when we think about defense right now, we think about the Legion of Boom. This secondary is freaking unbelievable with Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas. These guys are just unbelievable. Their defensive line and their linebackers are also very, very good as well. The one thing Seattle doesn't do is they don't get a lot of sacks. But I do expect that given the fact that they're trying to improve that defense just a little bit even more on a year-to-year -year basis, I don't see any reason to think that that won't go up here in the next couple of years. Obviously, we're looking at the 49ers offensive line taking a big step back this season. Um, and, and really, Arizona, their offensive line doesn't look very good. St. Louis, their offensive line is is okay. But you really look at these the teams in this division, and all three of those teams have major offensive line problems, in my personal opinion. I think Seattle is going to go ahead and exploit that in the games that they play against the, the NFC West teams. 
And really, there's really not a lot of reason to believe that Seattle is not going to going to again be elite an elite fantasy defense. They've been top five for quite a few years now, and I expect that to continue again this season. So uh, the other thing that I really like about Seattle this year is that they do have Tyler Lockett, who again, we don't like to project kick return, punt return, defensive touchdowns, but this guy looks unbelievable. This guy looks like, I mean, I'm not going to compare him to Devin Hester because that's, I mean, that's like a world-class type of, of returner there, Hall of Fame type returner. But when you look at the best kick returners in the league right now, Tyler Lockett's right up there. I mean, he's only played in the preseason so far against defenses that are or special teams units that really haven't had an opportunity to see him before. So it's hard to really prepare for a guy like that. But from just a physical skill standpoint, Tyler Lockett looks unbelievable, and Seattle is going to do a great job this year defensively to begin with, but it's nice to have that little cherry on top of the cake, I guess, if you're looking for something to uh, to push a defense over the top, and that's why, again, we're going with Seattle again as our number one defense. Very hard to picture a scenario where they don't finish in the top five. So that's going to do it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the defensive unit video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're going to be doing more and more videos here over the next couple of days before your fantasy drafts are over with and before the season begins. So do me a favor, leave your comments below if you have any suggestions or any questions that you'd like me to answer for you. I will definitely go ahead and try and do those things for you guys. So, so there you have it, guys. Thank you again so much for all your support. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.